So it's January, and that means I think a lot of us are leaning back into our healthy routines, but we still want dessert. Or an easy snack that still hits those sweet notes. And it hits all the cottage core notes too, you know? Nothing screams, I'm a little fairy, skipping through the woods, uh, resting my head on an acorn, quite like oatmeal cookie baked apples, which is what we're making today. Um, this is perfect if you're having a little bit of a lighter January, but you still want dessert or a nice, healthy breakfast or snack that is a little bit indulgent and um, decadent feeling, but made with the glory of naturally sweet apples, deliciously fibrous oatmeal, um, a little coconut sugar, a little almond flour. It's very melty, very like candy oatmeal experience. It's gonna be really like soft and luscious in the center. The uh, apple's gonna bake up, so it's very tender too. I'm scenting it through with some cardamom and cinnamon and nutmeg threw some currants in there. It's decadent, it tastes like a oatmeal cookie, but it's in an apple and you're gonna love it. Um, let's make it. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a little well in our apple. I literally just did this three seconds ago, so I would have one to show you. Apples turn brown very quickly. So what you're gonna do to make sure they don't, you wanna just juice half a lemon, catch the seeds. So you have a little bit to rub on the inside, even though as it bakes, no one's gonna notice that it's extra golden brown on the inside. I took a bite out of this one too, just to make sure it was as delicious as I know it would be. Um, and we're still gonna use it because it has that nice little well to it. Okay, let me show you how to core this apple if you do not own a melon baller, right? So you take the top off, save this, makes a lovely peanut butter and chocolate sandwich with two halves for your kids, one of my kids' favorite snacks. And then just take a tablespoon measure and set it on the surface. Actually, it's a little bit simpler to get like a flat surface and just do a boop, little carve out. And then you just kind of keep working your way until the entire core is removed, making sure that you're getting all those seeds out. And I find it's most uniform if I rotate the apple as I go. And once you get to the bottom, where all the seeds have been removed and the core is mostly removed, I go one layer more just to make sure I'm not gonna have any, um, you know, stiff parts left. I want it soft and luscious and melting by the time this apple comes out of the oven. Let me get a casserole dish, any kind of baking dish will do, and you're just gonna set your apples up on the inside and continue working. I have Honeycrisp apples here, FYI. You could do Granny Smith's if you like it a little tartar. Any baking apples, beautiful here too. Anything that's gonna hold its shape and be nice and um, firm enough to withstand the you know half hour in the oven, 40 minutes in the oven. The one thing I will say is that choosing a naturally sweet apple like this Honeycrisp is gonna still give me that nice tartness that I love, but um, it's gonna lend itself very nicely to the desserty feeling of this otherwise very healthy treat. Apples are scooped. Make as many as you like, or as few as you like. This works beautifully. If you just wanna do one, you can honestly just stick it in some aluminum foil and go to town, or a little muffin tin. I have them all set up in little muffin tins. The reason I like to do it in a casserole dish, though, is sometimes they do wilt or seep a little bit, and you just wanna keep clean up as simple as possible. Um, let's make some oatmeal cookie filling. So I have one and a quarter cups of old-fashioned rolled oats densely packed with fiber and nutrients to fill you up, give you nice texture, and to give you that oatmeal cookie flavor that we're craving. I added in some almond flour. Almond flour is great to have in here because it definitely adds some bulk and fillingness to, um, to our oatmeal cookie combo. It also is really very um, dense and sort of weighty and moisturizing, so it definitely, not for your skin, but just keeps the mix feeling very like luscious and I'm not gonna say fudgy, but you know, there's some moisture left inside, that's what I mean. Coconut sugar, nice little bit of sweetness. Um, coconut sugar also has a little like malty note to it, almost like molasses, and coconut sugar is the dehydrated sap of the coconut palm. Um, so do with that what you will. It is, it's just a less processed sugar. It does have some minerals in it. It has a slightly lower glycemic index. It adds a nice little bit of sweetness here and um, a little bit goes a long way. I have a third of a cup in here and I'm gonna add a tablespoon of maple syrup just to add that wonderful mapley taste. I'm gonna add coconut oil um, as my sort of fat and bonding agent as opposed to butter, but you could definitely use butter here if you prefer that. Oh wait, before I add the coconut sugar, let me talk to you about some spices. So I have some nutmeg, some cinnamon, and some cardamom. You can vary these up and do what you like most in your sort of uh, like 
pumpkin spice fall flavor blends. Anything that's gonna feel really warming and cozy in these apples I think goes a long way. Obviously cardamom is my queen of spices and she always makes it in, but um, allspice is great. Uh, we did the nutmeg, we did cinnamon. You could do all one and none of the others. I'm gonna add in some currants as well. And let's just give that a quick stir. Oh, and a pinch of salt. You really do need salt with your sweet. It just makes the whole sensory experience so much more pleasurable and heightens your taste buds, wakes them right up. Break up any clumps of currants. We want them evenly distributed through our oatmeal blend. And now grab your softened coconut oil, which happens to be a lovely moisturizer. But what you're gonna do here is just pinch it through to make a gloriously reminiscent of oatmeal cookie dough. And as I pinch, you can see it starts to form this kind of wet sand consistency, loosely holding together, coating all those oatmeal flakes. And another thing I'm obsessed with about this recipe, guys, is that it comes together so quickly and is absolutely something simple enough to make if you just wanna try something fast that looks delicious that you've probably seen versions of all across your Pinterest and Instagram feeds and I wanted to give it a try yourself. It's also a great thing for your kids to help with. What I just did, depending on the age and focus of all of your children, they could probably do just about everything in this recipe. You can put it in the oven for them. Okay, so grab your apples and I like to sort of drop them in like this. I don't pack it into the apple because I do want there to be enough space for as the coconut oil melts, um, the filling to kind of drop down and have those little juices from the apple start to collect. It leaves a little airiness to the mix, but if you want to pack it down, it just will be a little bit denser. So just let it drop in and then do give yourself a little pile on top because the surface of that pile is what gets nice and crispy and you get this great kind of caramelized note on top. Just have a little stuffing left over. Mm. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, it tastes like very delicious granola. I am adjusting this recipe as we are going because I already had this lemon um, sliced in half for the apples and I kind of do like when there's that, again, I really enjoy recipes where there are, it's not one note. Your, your like taste buds keep guessing every time they bite in and it's soft, luscious, tender apple flesh and then chewy, nutty flavored, Oh, if you have some walnuts and you want to chop those or pecans, do it up. Definitely do it up. I have a thought. I have a thought about how I'm going to adjust this at the end now that I haven't put nuts in at the beginning, but definitely do that if you'd like to. Um, so a little tart acidity to help juice these babies up as they cook and keep us nice and intrigued with the mystery <laughs> of our glorious baked apples into a 375 degree oven. 35 to 40 minutes. This is again, one of those recipes that is really gonna let you know when it's done because your kitchen will be perfumed with the sweet heavenly ambrosia essence of baked oatmeal cookie apples. Okay, so these apples have been baking 40 minutes at 375 and they are toasty and roasty, sweetened, softened, and smelling divine. Ooh, check them out. Look at those guys. And you see that wonderfully crisp surface on the apples. Look at how some of the skins have started to pucker and split as the apple softens and gets juicy and just, mm, it's gonna be gorgeous. But you know what's gonna make it even better? A yummy vanilla sauce. Still keeping it moderate, keeping us on our goals, on track, but giving us something really heavenly to sink our teeth into. So I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple vanilla sauce using almond milk, a little more maple syrup. You could use the coconut sugar instead if you prefer that, if you want that little like malty coconut flavor. And um, it's not that strong, by the way, just FYI, the coconut sugar doesn't like taste like coconut. It just has some minerality to it. And um, tapioca flour, which looks like this, and that is just going to help us thicken up this sauce. There are other things you could use, but that's what I'm using today. So let's make the sauce. It's really simple. Um, and the apples need to cool 10 minutes anyway. So this is the perfect time to make it extra zhuzhi because what I have to say is absolutely true in my life. When you can find ways to make your healthy eating feel indulgent, 
special, celebratory, fun, you are this much more likely to stick with it and have fun with it, which is, I found the way that humans really stick with anything. Make it fun. Okay, one cup of almond milk. You could use another dairy alternative if you'd like. You could use regular milk if you'd like. It's very customizable. Um, a splash of maple syrup or more coconut sugar if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and do two tablespoons because the apples are already really nice and sweet on their own. So we don't need a ton more sweetness, but you know, we're really looking to the sauce to like juice it up a little bit, but a little sweetness goes a long way. A splash of vanilla extract, a pinch of salt. We'll go in at the end after I add the tapioca in. Let's start with a tablespoon of tapioca and I'm just gonna sieve it in, whisking pretty consistently. So sieve and whisk, <laughs> sieve and whisk people. You just wanna avoid accidentally having like any clumping happening. And this really nicely, evenly distributes your tapioca. Not a traditional technique. No one told me to do it that way. I just decided to do it that way once and it worked really nicely. So I've stayed with that technique. <laughs> but if you don't feel it's necessary, then don't do it. And then just, you wanna make sure to cook the tapioca out so you have a really velvety, luscious sauce. No raw flour taste or flour or tapioca taste. And I have it over a medium high heat right now. I'm gonna take it down to probably a medium and just keep whisking. We're gonna be here like a minute or two until the sauce gets lovely, thick, and pourable. Oh, and I just remembered that we talked about potentially adding some nutty component into, oh my gosh. Okay, wait, come here, come here for one second. Come here for one second. Look at how thick and lustrous this sauce already is. Just after that minute or so of whisking, we have a, oh my gosh, it's done, done, the end. Look at me, I'm a perfect vanilla, pourable, anoint your apple sauce. Okay, that was so fast. We have time to do the one other thing that we talked about, which was find a way to infuse the nutty essence into these apples that I thought about after I made the oatmeal crumble cookie topping thing. Which is to say, get yourself some almond butter. And you could, if you're like confident that everybody who's eating these apples is gonna want it, just spoon it into your vanilla sauce, which is gonna make a almond butter vanilla sauce, which sounds heavenly. Or you just wanna heat your almond butter up separately so it is also pourable. And you, that way you have an opportunity to add a little cinnamon to it or more cardamom, which I might do because you know how I feel about cardamom. I'm not like a ton here, guys. We're gonna do maybe two or three tablespoons of almond butter because we just want it to pour ever so, ever so delicately over our apples. Let that come to heat with, let's do a little cinnamon. I love this. I love when we can experiment and play on the flat cardamom. And let's also do some salt, just a pinch. Trust me, trust you lady. Okay. And I want it ever so slightly more pourable than it already was. So warming it will help with that. But if it's, our, if it's not, it's still not quite gonna like drip the way I want it to. What I'm gonna do is add a splash more almond milk, almond milk into almond butter, adding a little of that moisture back in. Okay, and now, now we cook it just until it thickens a little second. I turn the heat off. The residual heat is gonna help us continue to warm this sauce up and make it really nice. It's almost like a caramel texture now. Mm -hmm. Oh, guys, a moment for the vanilla cream. Mm-hmm. Just goose. Okay, and then, not quite the same texture. <laughs> We're gonna add a little more milk and just get it a little looser. Keep tinkering, keep tinkering. Maybe you can tell this is not an official part of the recipe. So if you wanna leave this part off, you are very welcome to do so, but I think we're gonna like it. Okay, so I just kept 
stirring over a low heat, I added that splash more almond milk. And now we have pourable almond butter. Okay, before we add it to our plate, let's go ahead and taste it. Mmm. Ooh. There's like a very salty, nutty piece to that, which is going to complement our extraordinarily. I will tell something that freaks me out about this sauce every time I make it is it is it manages to be both like velvety and smooth and super creamy, but still light. That almond milk just keeps it really light. The tapioca makes it thicken without getting heavy. It's a rare bird. We like it a lot. Let's plate it up. Lift a gorgeous baked apple onto your plate. And now we have two sauces to choose from. And if you only want to use one, or you want none, by the way, I totally subscribe. This is going to be so flavorful all on its own, but the sauces are just like a nice little touch. First up with our almond butter. You could totally pull this onto your plate if you prefer it that way. And then go ahead and spoon your vanilla, or if you have your whisk already ready like this, and you want a more decorative feel. Oh yeah. But first, take a look. Oh my gosh, look at how this melting apple just falls apart. Are we kidding? Look at this, look at this. Tender roasting apple. Toasty, toasty oatmeal. Luscious sauces. Vanilla cream lacquering up our whole situation. This is definitely something to savor. This is definitely a beautiful little treat to warm your January heart. Enjoy. <laughs>